Quilters Newsletter TV, The Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters. Robert Kaufman Fabrics, quality fabrics for quilting. Sulky, express yourself with Sulky and create with confidence. And The Warm Company, inspiring products for creative people. My name is Frida Anderson and I live in Elgin, Illinois. I've been a quilt maker since I was in my teens. I've been fascinated with tree imagery all my life and many of my quilts have trees in them. The quilt that's with me here is called Duluth Trees and was inspired by a trip up to Duluth, Minnesota. You know, up in Minnesota, it's just blue and green. So my trees and my background had to be blue and green. I have um, also made this quilt. This quilt is fused, but I've also made a larger version that has been pieced. I am an art quilter. Most of my quilts are made from my own original designs, and most of my work is fused with my own hand-dyed fabrics. I enjoy the designing process as much as the quilting process, and uh, continue to make quilts, hopefully, until I'm a very old woman. I also use imagery that comes from my garden and my everyday life. I have many quilts that are designed from the flowers that grow in my garden. I have quilts that are made of the wildflowers that grow in the little woods. Every day I take a walk in the woods near my house with my little dog George and much of the inspiration that I see in the woods translates into my artwork. I have Jack in the Pulpits uh, quilts that I have made and I'm also using besides cotton I'm using a lot of silk in my work as well all of the fabric that I use is my own hand dyed fabrics and the silks give a just a beautiful luminosity to the pieces that I create I do a lot of uh, machine quilting in the backgrounds of my work and enjoy the process of adding in different types of thread to the pieces that I create. The type of threads that I like to use are natural as well. I use rayon, silk, and cotton in my work. And I think it's very important that we document the pieces that we make. So I always machine quilt my name into my pieces. Um, my next series of work is going to be a series on wildflowers that I'm experiencing by the lake where I also walk with my little dog. So I have a group that's going to be consisting of prairie grass and cattails. I'm Sherry Driver. I'm from North Glen, Colorado, and this is my quilt pineapple salsa, which is a very big fav favorite of mine. Um, the fabrics are a lot of fabrics that I never thought I could make into a quilt because they're so strange. They're kind of loosely woven and they're called ecots. Um, that's a fabric that is hand dyed and hand woven. The fabric has its pattern dyed into the, um, the threads before the thread or before the fabric is woven. And they're really unusual. I collected them for a lot of years thinking I would just get small amounts of fabric because I didn't think I could really make them into a quilt. And then one day I thought, well, I'll pull out some of these strange fabrics and see if I can do some fussy cut stars with them. Part of the, um, I think the beauty of these fabrics is that because they're handmade, the repeats aren't exact. And I thought perhaps my fussy cut stars would look really dumb because the repeats are different. And I ended up loving the way that they look. They're kind of unusual and they don't quite match exactly, but I thought that was really kind of fun. After I made the stars, I put them away thinking, well, that was the end of that. And then a contest came along that was asking for pineapple quilts. So I pulled out those stars that I loved so much and gathered other fabrics that I thought looked great with them. And I drafted the quilt to go with the stars that I had already made. So this is how the quilt turned out. Little by little, I figured out how I could make some of the different parts of it. Back to my stash to find more fabrics. And one fabric I found not in my stash, but in my husband's closet. This used to be his robe and now it'll be forever in this quilt. A lot of those fabrics were bought on trips, including the last trip I ever took with my mother through the Panama Canal. I didn't have enough of the border fabrics to make the border out of just one of the fabrics, so I had to pull out something extra and different to put in to finish up the, the quilt even with a different fabric. 
Now I've learned I need to buy larger pieces of fabric, but I love this. I love the way that you had to figure out how to make the quilt out of what I had, go to the stash, grab something similar, and finish it up. I hope you like the quilt too. My name is Tula Pink. I am originally from Los Angeles. I now live in a small town of about 600 people outside of Kansas City. And this is my quilt, Beanstalks. And it is about, when I moved from the city to the country, it was a lot of culture shock. And um, it really changed the way I made quilts, the way I approached shapes and the way I put them together. And so this is sort of a city girl's interpretation of agriculture that I now found myself living in. And it was very much you know, I'd wake up and instead of seeing traffic and cars and cell phones ringing and all of that, I was waking up to mooing and roosters and bugs, a lot of bugs, um, and all this stuff growing everywhere, uh, corn and soybeans, and I couldn't tell the difference between one or the other, you know, if it wasn't in a basket in a grocery store with a label on it, I didn't really understand what it was. Um, and so I started making this quilt sort of all, the, all this agriculture around me was so, such an alien thing to me that I wanted to make a quilt that sort of expressed how I saw all this agriculture around me. So this quilt, Beanstalks, is how I saw it. It's these big growing plants, but they're so alien and foreign to me, so I wanted to express them in that way. When you don't actually know what you're looking at, you can take a lot more liberty with shapes and not have to make all the correct parts in all the correct places. And uh, so I wanted to put a little bit of my flavor in it. So this is a city girl's idea of what things look like when they're growing, <laughs> when you don't know what growing actually is. Um, and the fabrics in the quilt are all my own fabrics that I designed. And so working with the things that I actually make Quilting for me is about having my hand in every single part of it. I like to make something start to finish. If I could actually make the batting myself, I would, because um, I'm just that into controlling every part of it. So um, in a lot of my quilts, including this one, I start by designing the fabrics, then I'm telling a story with that, then I'm telling a story with the block design or the quilt design itself and then using the quilting to actually finish that story and complete and tell the entire narrative. So this is a city girl's interpretation of country life, and that's it. My name is Diana Belkite, and I'm an associate curator at the North Carolina Museum of History. The quilt I have here today was made by a woman named Patience White, who was from Alamance County in North Carolina. The quilt was made in 1907. Patience White was born a slave in Alamance County around 1830. We don't know her exact birth date. Um, we actually don't know a lot about her. Our only sources of information are that she um, are from the 1880 census and also from oral tradition. Um, this quilt came into the museum's collection in 1964 and was given by a woman named Margaret Hayseller. And the story she told when she donated this quilt to the museum was that Patient Swite had made this quilt as a new baby gift um, and had given it to her mother when she, Agnes Hayseller, was born in 1907. Um, and the reason that she made this quilt was a gift of gratitude in addition to being a new baby quilt because um, Mrs. Hayseller's mother had taught Patient Swite to read and write. Um, now, going back to look at census data, um, in 1880, Patience White, who lived in Alamance County, was listed as being illiterate, unable to read or to write. Um, so if the family story is correct, then she would have learned and had become literate sometime between her 50th and 77th birthday, which is a real accomplishment and something for which she obviously felt great gratitude to make and give a gift like this quilt here. Aesthetically, the, the quilt is, has sort of a sense of asymmetry about it, but it, it all sort of fits together into a symmetrical quilt. Um, it has shadowing, um, like many log cabin quilts do, but in, in sort of a um, hard to distinguish pattern. So that's sort of an interesting choice that the quilt maker made. 
Um, it's made of uh, a very large number of different fabrics, probably sewing scraps that Patience White saved over the years. Um, I tried counting the number of different prints in the quilt and had to stop because it just got to be too big of a number. Um, but there are more than 10 red and black prints, which I thought was just a, an amazing number. But of course, red and black prints were very popular in the, the 1890s, um, 1900 time period. So she had been saving a lot of this fabric for a long time. And the quilt is, is tacked or tied rather than being quilted. So another interesting choice on the part of the quilt maker. It's a pretty incredible piece of work and we're, we're glad to have it in our collection to be able to share it with people. Quilters Newsletter TV, The Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters. Robert Kaufman Fabrics, quality fabrics for quilting. Sulky, express yourself with Sulky and create with confidence. And The Warm Company, inspiring products for creative people.